Okay, welcome to the mini paint challenge. It is week 15 now, and we have a really exciting reference photo to paint. Uh, I, if you are new here, here are the how to join rules instructions. We are going to be painting a little bow bun today. It's Oh, I can't wait to show you guys the little bow bun. I posted it up on my website, so you can go to the mini paint challenge link in my bio, and it will say mini paint challenge. Click on there, and then you can find the reference photos from all the past weeks. So if you want to do any of the last reference photos from past weeks, then you can go there and download it. So then you get like a higher quality image. It's nice because then you can blow it up on your screen, and it's easier to follow along that way. So that is uploaded for you guys already. And just some uh, housekeeping here. So if you want to join, make sure you use the hashtag mini paint challenge and tag me at Megan Jossel Art on either like Instagram or Facebook. And then I can see what you guys have created. So we are going to, I'm gonna move over to the paint mixing scene so then you guys can see the reference photo. So I've got the reference photo up here my little arrow up here and you can see what we're going to be doing today. I've blown it up on my screen here so that we can paint together. But we'll just get in to paint mixing right away so then we can get this one going. I'm going to pull up my sleeves so I don't get paint all over my sleeves. And move this over here. Hopefully that's all good. There we go. Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. There we go. Okay, we are gonna go over the colors we're using today so that my husband can put them in the chat and in the description. I have some colors already on my palette from last week. We used quite a few of them up, so we'll have to replenish some of them. But we've got, I'm just trying to see what colors we should use today for the reference. I actually think I'm going to make the blue in the reference a little bit darker, like almost kind of similar to the way we did this like sushi one. I guess I could go down here. Did this sushi one. So I'm thinking maybe like more of like this blue instead. We'll kind of like switch it up a little bit from the reference that I made. I thought I would want to go with the lighter blue, but I'm thinking the darker blue. So we'll use the cerulean blue and then some of the ultramarine blue to get that in the background. Mix with a little bit of alizarin crimson, which we actually need more of. Went to the art store the other day because I knew we were running out of some colors. So got some extras of a few of the pigments that I use a lot. So this one is alizarin crimson. I will name the rest of them. Also got, I don't know if we'll actually need quinacridone magenta today. No, we're not going to use that because normally I put quinacridone magenta there. The one new color that I haven't used on my palette yet that I got the other day was quinacridone red. So I'm excited to try that out for maybe like a different painting. I don't quite need it today. We've got, so we've got, uh, got titanium white. Alizarin Crimson, uh, Cadmium Red Light, Cadmium Yellow, and then we've got Cadmium Green, Sap Green, Cerulean Blue, Cerulean Blue Hue, that's what I'm using, and then this one is Ultramarine Blue, and then I still have some Burnt Sienna on here as well. I don't honestly think we're going to add too many of the other colors on here. I think we've got pretty much what we need to mix. I try to keep the palettes a little bit basic so then we're not mixing with too many base colors. It makes it a little easier when you have a limited palette when you're first getting started into oil painting or even acrylic painting and it's better to have like less colors so then you learn how to like properly mix things. So the first color we're going to go with is, I think the background will start out with a nice pretty blue background. And like I said, I'm going to do it more like this sushi here that we did for one of the other weeks. 
And we've got kind of like this lighter blue, so we'll do cerulean blue mixed with a little bit of titanium white. And as we get back here, it's mixed more with the ultramarine blue. And then in this shadow area, we're going to mix a little bit of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson to kind of make like a purplish color. This one's more of a green tint one, but I want to do more of like a purpley tint one on this. But let's get started so let's start with the dark area so we'll go in with alizarin crimson first nice pretty blue or sorry ultramarine blue and then alizarin crimson mixing up my colors yeah the description should be still accurate i didn't actually change any of the colors the only color i'm not using is quinacridone magenta i don't think i'm going to use that one today should be all kind of the same from last week. Anyway, you can copy and paste it into the chat for everyone so then they can see it, but it should be in the description too for you guys. Especially if you're watching it back, it'll all be in the description there. It's a nice purple. So, yeah, I think that's like kind of like the darkest area of the purple. So I'm just going to slowly start piling up the colors that I want there. Perfect. Yeah, there he, my husband's got it there. I'm going to add some more ultramarine blue to this. I feel bad that he barely had viewers. Oh, that's okay. A lot of people um, I know on like my Instagram and Facebook, they watch the replays back because they just can't join me at this time. I think it's a hard time for a lot of people in North America because they're at work, but I can't do it in the evenings here normally because I have a kiddo. So I understand that people have to watch the, uh, the lives back. That's okay. My, my husband and you are in the chat. We are just having fun mixing because I would have been doing this anyway. This is like just what I like to do during the day is paint. So at least I get to share it on here and people get to watch it back, which is nice. Okay, so we've got kind of like a darker purple and then a purpley blue there. And now we're going to make some more transition colors. So we're going to go from ultramarine blue. We're going to add a bit of a um, cerulean blue as well into it. It'll start making nice bright blue. Cerulean blue is really pigmented like that. There we go. There we go. That's looking pretty nice. That, let me look. Yeah, that's what we're going for there. So I will put that over there. And then we're going to grab some cerulean blue again. We're just going to slowly change this color a little bit. I'm going to add some white into there. We'll start to get that nice blue, sky bluish color. Such a pretty color. I love using uh, cerulean blue in my paintings. Oh, hopefully I'm not scraping that too much. A little scrapey. Okay, and then we'll grab a little bit more. We're just kind of making a gradient. Well, not a gradient. I guess it's kind of a gradient. We're going from purple to the lighter blue there. I'm making transition colors in between so then it's nice to blend. I'd rather blend on my palette rather than on my canvas because it ruins your brushes if you're mixing paint with your brushes. It's best to buy a palette knife if you can. And these are pretty affordable. I think I got this one for, this one's a slightly more fancier one because it's like a, a metal one with a wood handle. I think this one was maybe like nine or ten dollars. But you can get some cheaper palette knives as well. And that's Canadian, so I guess everything in Canada 
it's pretty expensive. <laughs> the description has info about the collab with Reach. Oh, I deleted that. I see it on the YouTube description. Oh. I did a collab last week. I thought I deleted that last night. Whoopsie doodles. <laughs> When I was starting to chew paper upstairs, so I'm like, yeah, it's Oh, weird. no. <laughs> the cats were causing a ruckus again. That sounds about right. The cats were so funny. I went live on uh, on Vertical. I did a Vertical live stream when I was setting up this stream. So it was like a pre-stream stream last night. And we were just, like, chatting with everyone. And the cats were just causing chaos in the background. They were kind of hilarious. They were... Super wired last night, pulling out like the vent in the wall and chewing on plants. Sounds pretty typical, right, hun? <laughs> yeah, especially when they're hungry. Yeah. Well, no, you had fed them, and they had still started causing chaos. They're kind of funny. I wonder if they can hear them like meowing in the background. It's not meows, it's more like meow, meow, meow. Oh, so cute. Okay, I'm just gonna clean this blue off the palette. That's kind of like our starting background colors that we're gonna use. Going for a slightly darker background. And then what should we start on next? Let's start with the orange. Yeah, let's start with the orange. We got some carrots in there. So we're going to use a little bit of the cadmium red light. I'm going to add some cadmium yellow to it. Makes a decent orange that we can use. Let's see how close that is to what we want. Just make sure that when you're doing the painting that you take the paint and you hold it up to your reference photo just to compare to see how the color is looking. So I'm looking at, here, I'll use my arrow here. I'm looking at the darker part of the orange right now, and I'm also comparing it with the lighter parts here. These ones are more yellow on the side, and in here it's like a, a deeper color, and it's desaturated a little bit. So this color is good for the middle part there where it's a little bit darker, but we need to desaturate this color, and in order to desaturate, we need to add the opposite color on the color wheel, so the contrasting color, which for orange would be like a bluish color. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of ultramarine blue to this, and it'll desaturate the color a little bit for that area, and let's see if that's enough that it brings it into that deep color that we're looking for. So that's actually looking pretty good. I'm going to put that there. There is a slightly darker color too, so I'm going to keep a little bit on my palette just to compare. Yeah, so that's pretty good in that. We're going to use a little bit of alizarin crimson and yellow instead of this brighter red, just because we really need that darker orange and alizarin crimson is really good for getting those deeper orange colors out because you can only darken this like bright saturated color so much and you can see how that's like quite a bit darker let's see how that's compared so we definitely want to add maybe a little bit more red into that. And we're going to desaturate that color by adding a bit of blue into it. A little bit of the ultramarine blue again. And that'll desaturate it. 
give us that nice orangey carrot color in the darker sections. We'll see if we need to add more red, but it should be pretty much in line with what we're looking for. I'm going to make it a little bit more red. Add a little bit more of the alizarin comes into it, and I think it'll be good there. Make sure you mix these colors up quite well. So let's see. Yeah, that's closer to what we want. So that's the orange there. And then, so we've got the lighter parts. We want to use a little bit more of the cadmium red again, but it's more yellow on the side of yellow. So we're going to have way more yellow in this one. I'm going to slowly mix that in, pick up some of this other color there. We're going to try to color match that the best that we can. I'm really just looking for it to be in a similar as similar as we can get to the color anyway. We're pretty much trying to match up the values in it. We're not trying so we definitely need a bit more yellow there. We actually have to grab a little bit more A little bit more cadmium yellow, which I know my cadmium yellow is getting really low. I'm going to have to uh, use my paint thing. Now let me open, open the cap. I have this little paint thing that helps me to uh, push out the paint more. really hard to get some of these colors out when the tubes get like that but then it makes like cool little ridges on it okay. just bought more of this the other day so if we run out of the yellow I have some more one other new color I got too which I guess is similar to the cadmium yellow light is cadmium lemon I'm going to have to try playing with that one a bit more. I feel like they're pretty similar, honestly. But I see other artists using that instead of the cadmium yellow light. And lemon just sounds like a nice color, so I'm going to have to try it out at some point. This is a really nice orange we've got going on. So that's actually getting quite close to that color now. I would say we even want to go a little bit more yellow in there. Oh yeah, a little bit more yellow. that. I like that orangey color. I'm going to also make one. I'm going to keep a little bit of that orange and add a bunch of yellow to it to make like a brighter section. And the colors, I've said this before, are going to look a little bit odd on the palette compared to the reference image. But just keep holding up the colors to the reference image and comparing that way. And trust that the colors will look good once you get them on the actual picture. adding a little bit of alizarin crimson to this, make it a little more orangey, but like a deeper orangey. That 
looks pretty good. Okay. So we got nice colors for the carrots there. I realize I'm using like the giant palette knife and I could be using like the tinier palette knife. Here it is in the smaller one. I've got this smaller one. Well, I'm excited to use some of my new brushes too because uh, I went to the art store the other day and I got a few new brushes. We've got some like really fun like flat brushes and one liner brush to play with today. So. I'm definitely going to be trying out some of these newer ones that we got. It's like a completely different brand that I've tried before, so I'm hoping that it's good. Okay, so this next one, we're going to do the sauce next. Mix the colors for the sauce. I'm just going to clean this off a bit. We're actually going to make the sauce more of like a purple. Add some purple in there. I'm going to kind of like use almost kind of like a purple like this. So we're going to mix ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And they should make a really nice deep purple. We're going to add a bit of yellow to it. I think the purpley sauce will be nice, yeah. So then we will add, I'm gonna put the sauce here maybe, because we probably only need like a few colors for the sauce. And then we're gonna take the alizarin crimson Mix it in with a little bit of the purple that's already left on there. We're going to slowly turn this color into like an orangish color. I'm going to add a little bit of the cadmium yellow. I'm trying not to add too much. Yeah, that's like closer to what we want there. And then for the outer part, a bit more cadmium yellow. I just kept a little bit more on my palette knife there of that red that we made. And it's gonna slowly shift to an orange color. It'll be almost kind of similar to like these colors too. So we probably could dip into those colors as well if we need them the carrots because the carrots and the sauce are kind of mixed a little bit so they are going to combine so it's good that we keep those on a similar color palette I almost need that like a little bit of blue in there it's like literally mixing that color again so I don't know why I'm mixing it again <laughs> maybe I will Yeah, because we pretty much have mixed. This one's like a little bit deeper, so actually that's okay. This one's just slightly deeper than this orange color. But we will use it. So that'll be kind of for the sauce area. And we have some pretty bright highlights in the sauce too. Um, we can mix up that highlight color now. If we're going to mix a highlight color, you definitely want to make sure your space you're mixing highlights on is like super clean. So make sure you just clean off that area you're going to mix the color in and clean off your palette knife really well too. I'm just using an old like cut up towel. That's what we have here on the side. Just old cut up dog towels. <laughs> okay. And we're going to do the highlight now. So the highlight is kind of airing on more of like the bluish side. So we're going to take white. So 
some titanium white because we're not going to like so if you just put titanium white up to the highlight you will see that it has like a bluish tint to it and you're going to use the smallest the smallest amount of cerulean blue don't put too much And that should give it that bluish color there. Old bath towels, dog towels, <laughs> oil paint rags. Exactly. It goes from bath towels to dog towels to oil painting rags. That's exactly what happens. I said not to add too much blue. Hopefully I didn't add too much blue there. Going a little crazy. No, that's actually good. Okay. Yeah, you have to be careful with the cerulean blue because as soon as you add too much, it uh, end up having to kind of start over again. Unless you want to mix like giant piles of paint. Okay, so I'm just picking it up now. I like to pick it up. I mean, you'll kind of see my technique, but I like to pick it up like on the tips. I kind of like bend it to the side and I pick it up all on the tips. So then I can make like little piles of it here. Do, do, do. And we're going to do the, so this is actually like a plant-based bow bun that we made the other day. And it's like, it's some sort of like tofu and like pea protein and it's got like this like crispy crust on it. So I think it's like breaded in some way. Really good, really delicious. It was our local uh, grocery store that came out with these. I'm in Canada, so I don't think they have them probably anywhere else, but they're called Real Canadian Superstore. It's like a grocery chain in Canada. But they came out with all of these like really delicious plant-based products. I don't know if it's just like maybe in certain parts of Canada because I know that like the West Coast we tend to have like more plant-based stuff out here versus like in the Eastern places, especially in like smaller towns, they probably won't have some of these products at their superstore. But really good. If you can get your hands on these, these are actually really good. I think they're just called plant-based bow buns. And it's like a little kit and it comes with the bun and you can steam them and then you fry like the little middle section and then it comes with sauce and then we just added veggies to it because I feel like it tastes better when you have veggies on it. And then I'm going to actually use a little bit of burnt sienna for that crispy part just because burnt sienna is really nice to use. said this before, burnt sienna is my favorite to use for the center of avocados. It is a really pretty color. Yeah, like that, that's perfect. It's already like a perfectly mixed color for the darkest part. So I, that darkest part is like over here. I'm just pointing my arrow at it, kind of these darker sections. And then we're going to make a lighter one here by adding some like yellows in here. On the front section so we're gonna work on these sections now so I've got this back color we're probably gonna add some of these darker purples and stuff into it as well like later on but that's like a good base color and then we want that front section that's a little bit darker so I'm gonna work on probably this area here along the front of that crispy thing crispy thing I don't know what to call it <laughs> We'll call it crispy tofu. Add a bit of yellow to that. Actually, the other yellow that I recently got was Indian yellow. I feel like that would be really nice to play with because I feel like Indian yellow is kind of like orangish tinted. Yeah, it's like 
Indian yellow is like an orangish tint. Maybe it'd be fun to play with it today. Maybe I should put a little bit on my palette. Yeah, let's let's put a little bit of Indian yellow. Look at that. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's got a really nice orange color. Arvin, you can add Indian yellow to it because I've decided to add it to my palette. I'm going to add a bit of Indian yellow to this. I'm going to try it out today. It's one color I haven't experimented with. I said I wasn't going to experiment with it on the stream, but like, look at that. That is so nice. See what that looks like so that's like very orange orangey we actually want to go more purplish with this so we're going to add some blue so we're using the opposite color on the color wheel this is going to make it kind of like a green greenish color very desaturated green And that is way too green. I do not want that green. <laughs> We're just going to put that to the side because that didn't go well. Okay. What else are we going to do? We're going to... We're going to go back to... I think I just got excited with the new color and went a little crazy there. Like this is like decently close to some of it, but it's actually airing more on the side of like, it's like we've got this color. I feel like for some of it, we could just add a little bit of ultramarine blue straight to the burnt sienna. get so close already. And I think that's, yeah, that's, that's actually what we want in those darker areas. I'm going to actually move this color down here since we have a slightly a darker color now. Trying to keep the palette organized there. So we've got the darker color, slightly lighter color, and then we want to go into those kind of like almost mustardy yellows. And I think this is where we can use the Indian yellow here that I just put on. Mixing it in with that stuff there. Oh, that's actually really cool. That's like, yeah, that's transparent. That's a transparent yellow. That's not an opaque yellow. I was not expecting that. Wow, that's like really transparent. You can use that as like a nice glaze for yellow. You could glaze on top of your paintings with that. That's actually really nice. I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. I was not expecting that to be so transparent. That's a new color. Yeah, I, I maybe you had left your desk, but I added Indian yellow. This is the newer color Indian yellow here. It's got like an, it's transparent. So you can kind of like see through it. It's making these colors transparent. That's like super cool. Okay, that's like the nice red that we need. I was not expecting it to be like that transparent. Clearly I didn't read the label beforehand. That's really nice. There's probably some really nice uses for that. Um, okay. 
I'm going to add some cadmium yellow. We're mixing Indian yellow and cadmium yellow. <laughs> Let me see. So now we're going to lighten this. So I think that's kind of what we need. I'm going to put this to the side here. I'm going to take some titanium white. The one color I have yet to play with too is like a warm white. I bought a warm white and I feel like it would look pretty good actually in some of this. Maybe we will, maybe hun, you could add warm white to the list as well and we'll add warm white to the palette. We're adding two colors, two of my new colors because like I'm too excited like not to play with them. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to grab warm white. I've been wanting to pick this one up for a while now. So this is a warm white. This one's definitely opaque. <laughs> not a transparent color like the Indian yellow so what I'm thinking like look at that that's so nice it's already kind of like nicely pre-mixed for some of the warmer white tones in there yeah like that'll be great for some of the uh, white sections here at the back kind of in like the highlights of the tofu and I feel like we can actually just like Pretty much use the warm white straight out of the tube there, which is nice. I'm gonna put it over here because I gotta, gotta finish putting this color on the palette. Yeah, so I think this is the color we're gonna go with here. And then I'm also gonna make a slightly other tone. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that orangish that we mixed up there. I'm going to use a bit of warm white in this. Look at that. And a bit of, a bit more of that brighter yellow because we want some of those brighter tones to come out. We're just trying to make some more color variety there. Let's see. I want it kind of more of like a mustardy yellow, so we're going to make that, I'm going to add a bit more of this here, this orange. I think we need to add a little bit of blue in that just to make it like a mustardy yellow. Mustard yellow kind of has more of like a, a green tint to it. In order to make this green, you got to add a bit of blue to it. I think just that little bit of blue will help. It's like actually pretty close to what we want. I want a little bit more orange though. A little bit more blue and that should give us the color we want there we're like so close to that color that we wanted and I'm specifically I guess I can use this I'm specifically mixing this color here kind of some of those crispier bits that have that mustardy 
yellow color. Yeah, that looks good. And then for the highlight parts, we're going to use this warm white that we mixed up. I'm going to grab a little bit more warm white. So honestly, like that color is good already. We don't need to mix that up a ton. The warm white will be really nice for those warmer highlights in the tofu. And then we can move on to the green bits, which will be really fun. So we've got cucumbers. I'm thinking we'll, oh, we gotta definitely clean this off. I'm gonna put this extra color up there. We do not want to be mixing our green on this. Make sure you clean your palette again. In between these colors. There we go. Especially when you're doing like contrasting colors, you want to make sure that you clean that off. Pull up my sleeve. So I've got sap green and cadmium green as well and we're gonna I think start out with the darker one so we'll go this actually the sap green is a mix it has Indian yellow in it so we could mix that green as well what is it it is Indian yellow and phthalo blue oh phthalo blue is actually one of the other new colors that I got but I normally just use sap green. It's one of the like kind of convenience colors that I keep on my palette. We all have our favorite convenience colors. I feel like, I mean, technically burnt sienna isn't a convenience color, but it, it is. Because <laughs> it just like works out of the tube for a lot of those like orangey tones. Especially in like landscapes and stuff. Okay, so that is a really nice dark color. I'm just gonna use sap green. See, like sap green is great right out of the tube because it's got a really nice tone to it. And then we're gonna use some cadmium green in there to lighten that up a little bit. A little bit more cadmium green. We're just making the different colors of the cucumber at this point. Lots of fun colors in this one. I love when we pick references that have a bunch of different colors to mix. So then you guys can see like a bunch of different colors being mixed on the palette here. Because I know like I get a lot of questions about mixing colors. So nice when we have reference photos that focus on that so like even if you just want to practice with these and mixing colors that's like a really good thing and then you can like swatch the colors to see if they're similar and how close you got them it's it's a really good exercise just mixing colors you don't even have to paint with them just like swatch them and see how many colors you can get pretty accurate Because right now we're kind of zoning into the image and we're finding, so the local color, I was explaining this last week, there's a local color and then there's the relative color and we're mixing relative colors right now. So what a local color is, is like, you know, like when you look at a carrot and you're like, well, it's orange. But then when you're mixing relative colors, it's like what you, exactly see in like the different shapes of the carrot so like you can see there's like shadowy bits so we mix this red color and then we mix this darker color and there's some yellows and oranges in there so like it's not just orange it's like a bunch of different colors so that's called relative color just some uh, nice little color theory terms that you can use in your paintings Little terms that I've learned over time by watching a lot of videos on color theory. <laughs> okay, that's a really nice green, I feel like. Yeah, that's a nice green. And then we want a lighter green as well. 
So we're going to actually add some warm white to that. And cadmium green. So warm white and cadmium green kind of mixed together gives us this really nice soft green color, which is perfect for the cucumber. I'm glad we got warm white in there now. I feel like I needed that color <laughs> on my palette. That'll be a staple on our palette from now on. Yeah, so that's that's a really nice green there. And then the next color we're going to need is some more warm white for the main part of the cucumber. Be right back. No problem, hun. Hubby's always managing chat over there. And then I think that's probably a pretty nice color. It's got like a greenish tint to it. And then we've also got kind of like a, a grayish color. So I think if we mix this greenish warm toned one with a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. I think it'll kind of gray it out a little bit. Need a bit more warm white into there. I think that'll give us kind of that grayish blue color. Yeah, that's perfect. And that will be really nice. I'm mixing the color for, let me use my arrow, the green, or the whitish green in there. It's got kind of like a grayish color. And then, yeah, I feel like that's pretty accurate. And then we also need the shadow color there. So we've got kind of like a really deep color in the shadow, but like, you think it's white, but it's actually kind of, you know, uh, let me use my arrow. So like these kind of shadow parts in there, they're right in there is kind of what we're mixing. So we are, I would say, erring on the side of blue and some greens in there. So we've got ultramarine blue. We can add a little bit of sap green, I think, in there. Ultramarine blue, sap green, kind of a bluish green. And then we're going to want to add a little bit of alizarin crimson in there. Add that purpley tone, a bit more of sap green in there. Hopefully I didn't add too much alizarin crimson there. I'm going to add a bit of warm white to it. Just to lighten it a little bit. See how the color turned out. I might have made it a little too grayish. Let me see. is too gray. <laughs> Actually, you know what? This color we put to the side earlier. Nope, that's not good. Nope, nope don't use that. So we made that, like it's pretty close, the grayish color we made. I think we could probably add a little bit more sap green in that. By a little, I mean a decent amount. A little bit to the side.
making a greenish gray right now for that shadow color. It's like really close actually. I'm actually getting it really close to what we need. I'm just going to put, I think, the shadow color down here. I'm going to take some of this and use some of that as well. So that's kind of the darker section. Those are shadow colors there. I think I like that. I'm not going to go too crazy with that shadow there. You can only add so much detail in these mini paintings. Sometimes you have to kind of be like, okay, I'm not going to add that detail. And then just back, just wanted to reset and apply my updates. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back to the stream. We managed to <laughs> mix the shadow color. There we go. Now we're mixing the bun color. So that's going to be our last color that we need to do. Now I think we can use warm white for this and it'll be really nice. We have warm white here. I think if we just yeah, like that's such a good bun color already. Like, look at that. Look at that bun color. And then, I mean, like, there's also like kind of like an orangish kind of section to the bun as well, but we can use some of these deeper colors underneath the bun that we made. Yeah, I think warm white will be a really good i'm going to put that down here warm white and there is kind of almost like a grayish color we actually might use some of these grays within the bun as well i think we have enough colors on our palette that we can just like get started and i think it will be nice yeah i think we have enough and I just want to get to painting. I'm going to transition to our painting scene. There is the painting scene. Make sure that's all ready and good. And so that you can see this, I'm also going to grab out my linseed oil. Oh, I got some paint on my hands. Let me just of course I got like the paint kind of like under my fingernail a bit. I actually got one of those fingernail like brush cleaners the other day. So I can clean underneath my fingernails. I'm gonna move the camera over a little bit so that you guys can see me while I'm like painting at the easel too. Always having to do that to make sure you can see me. We will turn this to the side. Not too far or you'll see all of the dirty dishes in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one with tons of dirty dishes I gotta wash. We went to bed last night well actually my husband ran the dishwasher so at least the dishwasher was going but we didn't wash the bigger pots and pans last night now we get to use the new brushes hopefully this is yeah that should be a, a good angle for you guys so you can see me and then i will be working on this here and i'm gonna grab my phone so I can film some stuff on my phone while I'm painting this. I am so excited to paint this one today. Put up my phone now. Just have to get the video setting on it.
There we go. Got the video setting. And this one looks okay. Just making sure you guys can see everything. And now I'm going to erase my, I just have a little a gummy eraser here, a little kneaded erasers, and I'm going to dab off some of my sketch because you don't want the graphite to get into your paint because it will muddy your paint. So we're going to avoid that by doing this. We're just dabbing it off so we can still see the sketch. But we want a lot of the looser graphite to come off right now. And then we are going to start, I think I want to try one of my flat brushes today because I have these little flat brushes. I guess I can put it over here. We've got these like flat brushes. These are Seneca or Seneca flat brushes. I saw them at my art store and I was like, I need to try these. They, they also look really nice too. They have like a nice like wood to them. And they also aren't shiny like on the tips here so then I feel like they would be nice to work with outside because they're not like super shiny which is nice you don't want a ton of glare from like the lights so like that's actually really nice especially for filming too I guess not having a super shiny surface because like the other ones like it's really shiny on these ones it's kind of nice to work with ones that aren't as shiny and we will start, I'm thinking it would be nice to start with, I want to paint the carrots for some reason. I feel like the carrots would be really nice to paint right now. So I'm going to start with the darker parts of the carrots. Ooh, look at that new brush, that new brush feel. So nice. Okay, we're going to do the darker parts of the carrots. Kind of work our way around these darker areas. I think the flat brush will be really nice for us because it'll be nice for getting those edges on the carrots too. I'm liking this brush already. Just trying to get those darker areas in with that. And then we will move into this next orangey color. You don't have to clean off your brush in between. We're just doing transition colors anyway. And then we'll start adding this orange color in there.
so a little bit of orange there. I'm gonna quiet down now while I focus on getting these lines in. I really like this new brush. The hope is that all brushes just kind of stay this nice and sharp, but that's like not a thing. Your new brushes are always going to be a lot more sharper. And I've also got, come over here for a second and it's a little bit darker as well here. Oh, I gotta grab my linseed oil. I didn't open my linseed oil yet. Uh, I can clean that off of my brush a bit. Go into this orangish color here. Orangish yellowy color that we need, and we're going to start adding these lighter tones into the carrots now. Wow, that got really dark. I need to make sure that I add enough light to. I'm going to bring this light over a bit. It's actually quite dark. There we go. I think the sun just kind of changed on us a little bit there. Get this orange over here as well. There we go. Slowly work that on. I'm really liking this new brush. It's quite nice actually. Actually, go into some of this yellowish orange color now. We'll start to add those brighter sections on the tips.
and we'll move that up into there a bit. And once we add all of the other colors around it, these uh, carrots will pop a little bit more. But you need to try to make sure you don't go too crazy with like making it bright right away, especially if you want to go for that more like realistic look. And then there's also like a carrot kind of right here. I'm trying to add those like little extra carrots there. Looks pretty good. to get some of the paint off of the brush now. Just cleaning that off with a little bit of linseed oil. I find that kind of helps a bit. Take a sip of my water, make sure I'm drinking enough water. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on some of the sauce parts. So we made this part for the sauce. I'm going to start with this purpley color. We're going to start to add that kind of in between some of the carrots here. I feel like this brush is great for that. Especially in these areas here. Kind of a mix between the purple and that reddish color that we made. Grab a bit more of that red color. It's kind of like glazing this over a little bit. Slowly adding that in there. Trying to make sure I have a 
core and all of this. Cats are jumping up on here, making sure they're not going to step in my paint. Kit Kat. Get down, Kit Kat. Get down. I don't want them like uh, stepping on the laptop and like ending the the stream on us. Dipping in tomorrow, this reddish, I guess it's like burnt sienna color. A light layer of this on. Just trying to like form the basic shapes and then we can go in with like highlights and stuff after. That's like one of the things is you have to kind of resist putting in tons of highlights until the end when you have like the shapes already done. So if you put the highlights in now, then you end up with less bright highlights. Are you trying the new brushes today? Yeah, so this is one of the new brushes. I am slowly working at it. I really like it because I think the true thing with like new brushes is after you wash them how they react. <laughs> so we will see how we like it in the next couple sessions after like we wash it and how it kind of weathers over time. That's the thing with new brushes, you don't really know until you've used it for a little while. I mean obviously it's like really good right right out of the thing right now. But it's got a really nice sharp edge, I like it so far. It's got a nice weight to it. I enjoy how it feels in my hand right now. It's nice and I find like this one maybe isn't as thick as my other brushes though. Like I feel like they could have made the actual paintbrush a little bit thicker because when you're doing details it's nice to have like it's less crampy on your hands if you have a bigger grip. Maybe you can get some of those like little foamy tools to, like go over each of your paint brushes to make it like slightly wider too. It's like easier to grip onto, especially if you have like arthritis or something. Like it can also just prevent it over time as well, especially when you're doing like tinier details. I always take good breaks in between my painting sessions though, so I don't wear my hands down. <laughs> it's good to always take, I think, feel like creative breaks are kind of needed anyway in order for you to kind of like get the creative juices going. You need to have kind of those mental breaks anyway, so it's a good time to rest your body. It's just like when you're painting for long periods of time, you're working out your hand the whole time, so you need to make sure you have like rest days and that you take proper care of your hand. So then you can continue to paint for a long time. adding those darker colors in there. I feel like that looks pretty nice. We're gonna go into this orangey color now. Orangey brownish color. Slowly add that in on the edges.
looking pretty good. I think when we add highlights to it, it'll kind of come together. Go back into that black. I'm saying black, but it's like a really dark purple. Just adding that darker purple back into this section here. little dabs of that darker purple in here just to add a little bit of dimension back into that area you can see the shape coming together yeah it's like slowly coming together we're just adding all of the colors to make the shape and then we'll add kind of the details and the extra little textures and stuff after just trying to get those like base shapes done for us first. I'm going to clean my brush a little bit. I feel like the tips of these brushes are going to get like stained on the top because they are like white brushes. Especially in the darker colors. And yeah, that's what I'm aiming for at the start is kind of uh, just that like basic shape to begin with. And then from there, you can shape it even more and like add little details and little highlights and stuff near the end. You're always wanting to kind of start with a basic shape. And we're going to work on the tofu-ish section now. So we're going to get the basic shape of kind of everything. And then we'll go back in and add those like little highlights and details. We did these ones. Those are our colors, right? Yes. We made. This kind of burnt sienna color, kind of near the front here. Just getting the, that shape down now. Come back in with some of the lighter colors as well. So we're just adding that darker kind of color on top and then we'll go back in the lighter sections and we'll come in with this slightly lighter section kind of like a reddish color that's the one that we mixed with the new pigment which is Indian yellow. And then I'm gonna go in this kind of like mustardy yellow that we made. Slowly add that mustard yellow into these sections. Kind of almost like dab it into the sections because that's going to kind of create that crispy look if we add this in in between the darker areas. We're not going to blend this out a ton. Just keep a lot of that raw color there. Have some kind of the white of the paper peeking through as well like to keep the white of the paper just because I use it as like highlights and stuff a lot of the time and it's kind of fun to use that. I got this slightly lighter yellow and we're going to slowly work on some of these bits on the top here. A bit more. 
kind of able to use just like one brush for this starting section. I really wanted to play with this new brush, so that's why I'm just trying to kind of use it for everything right now. Just to see what we can do with it. I don't use flat brushes very often. I use a lot of like blending brushes and stuff normally. It's nice to play around with something a little bit different. So I'll do this right there. I'm going to grab this warm white color that we have. And now we're going to add that warmer white into there. And that'll add the highlights on the tofu area. It's like crispy tofu. That warm white again. dabbing that warm white on. Into those areas. There's also some like bluer kind of highlights, but we'll put that on kind of near the end. There's like blue highlights in kind of like these areas. We have that blue highlight we made in kind of those areas there. I'm going to grab another brush. I'm going to grab one of these brushes. <laughs> yeah, my number four Chasel Blender brush. I think I kind of like the flat brushes though. They're really nice to use. They're like a little bit more flat than these blender brushes. I'm going to go into this deeper color for the tofu, kind of in that back section right here. I'm just adding that kind of darker part of the tofu. Actually, grab a bit of that yellow mustard yellow again. Add a little bit of that mustard yellow into this section here. I'm a little too white in some of this area, so adding some of that mustardy yellow back into it. Pretty good. I'm gonna just set this brush down. Clean off my brush a little bit more again. So we're going to work at this deeper color and bring that into this a little bit more. Looks pretty good. And then we are also going to just kind of blending this area out a bit. Just 
taking that darker color and adding a little bit of these like reds into it that we made. Okay, looks pretty good. Let me get some highlights on that, it'll look even better. And then the next one that we will do, we will start adding the green in the cucumber because I feel like that'll be really fun to play with next. Okay, so we'll start with the darkest parts of the cucumber. The darkest parts are kind of like the edges here. A lot of like little ridges on the cucumber. It's just kind of like the base. Now we'll grab this next color down. So this color sits in there. to this next green color down as well. And then this slightly lighter color. I'm going to try to get a decent amount of this lighter green on our brush now, and I'm going to go in to this area. We're going to slowly work into that warm white that we made. Right here. Oops, we got a cat here. <laughs> I'm going to clean up the brush a little bit before I go into that warm white. I made it a little too green by doing that. Flip this over so I have some more clean area to work on. Warm white. Specifically, the warm white will work really well around this area. This one's kind of got like more of a bluish tint to it. So, okay, and now this part over here. And now we're going to go into this like deeper color that we made down here. I'm going to clean off my brush a decent amount. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab a different brush for this section. I'm almost thinking I want to try using this angle brush for it. Let's grab this grayish color that we made, grayish green color. And I think that'll be really nice for this shadow area here. I'm going to 
of that shadow in there. Focus on getting that shadow in there. And the dimension will start to <laughs> come together. Kind of some darker parts in there. I'm going to grab some of this purple, and that'll deepen the area a little bit in between on the edges of it. It gives us a little bit more dimension there. There we go. I like how the jackfruit thing turned out. Yeah, I feel like the texture on it is actually quite nice. I was going to add more texture to it. I think I'm going to still add a bit of highlights to it, but I think the jackfruit actually turned out pretty good. I think it's jackfruit. I don't know. I don't know if it's jackfruit. I keep thinking it's like some sort of tofu. I'm going to have to look at the ingredients in the box again. It's been a little while since we ate them because I took this picture a few weeks ago <laughs> so I haven't looked at the box for a while and uh, they were really good though like they were really good I can use this grayish green color again on the shadow down here because I've got kind of like this grayish green shadow going on so, there again, go back into that. Kind of like the greenish thing is like reflecting onto the bell bun. Because in the shadows, we've kind of got like reflections of the different colors. But we can come back and touch these up when we add. We're going to add the color of the bow bun next, which is pretty much that warmish white. We're going to use a little bit of this gray color first. And there's almost kind of like, if you look down, let me use my thing, kind of, you can see down in this area, there's like little ridges, and then there's also kind of like a deeper shadow here in the bun. I'm going to use some of this green color that we made for that. To this area so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start adding some of those ridges in now the ridges will be lightened when we add the warm white color but I really feel like the little ridges will like add quite a bit to the bun just because there's not a lot of texture on the bun so we want to make sure we're Adding in a little bit of texture where we can. It's 
since we're using this as like a shadow color anyway. Actually, it should kind of match everything if we use this. Okay, I've got almost like a darker shadow back here too. And then on the top, there's more of like an orangish one. So it's like kind of like greenish down here on the shadow or on the bun. And then we've got kind of more of an orangey tint on the top. So I'm going to get that going on the top. I'm just going to clean off this green. Now we've got more of like, let's say more of like this kind of orangish color. Well, it's like a mix of these. It'll look really cool once we get like the background on this too. Kind of one carrot there that needs to stand out a little bit more. I'm going to add a bit of that carrot in there. Yeah, that's coming together slowly. Okay, the carrots are looking pretty. I honestly think I like the greeny, orangey thing we got going on there. So for the bun, I'm going to kind of make it have a little bit of the sauce on it. So I'm going to grab some of that reddish sauce. Bring it up into the bun here, kind of like the bun has a bit of that sauce. And that'll deepen that section that we want. Add a bit of that purpley color too back into there because we need this to be a little bit darker. And this will kind of Just kind of have some of that green area. Ooh, spiky food. <laughs> Not quite, but uh, it's uh, very spiky right now. We'll blend it out. <laughs> it almost kind of looks like the cucumbers are like spiky. You're right, though. So there's kind of like that darker greenish color, greenish shadow color into this area of the bun. So we're actually going to grab that there. Mm 
And then there's definitely some darker parts into that area too. So we're going to grab some of that green again and pull it into this back section here. And then pretty good to pull some of this green into the orangey section. Got a little bit of this green on the bun here. There we go. And the rest should be kind of that lighter color. This one has a bit of green in there too. Where the shadow is. We're just finding all those shadowy colors right now. Get some lighter green. Let's go in between these little spikes a little bit. And then I'm going to clean off this brush. Actually, we'll probably just, I think I cleaned this one off enough. Maybe we need to clean this one off a little bit too. But we'll use this flat brush again for the actual bun. And we have the warm white color that we're going to use as the bun color. Got to get this green out of there though. There's definitely some green pigment in there and we don't want... The bun to have that green in it. <laughs> Probably should grab a new brush. I should have got two of these. Like this is a really nice size. This is a zero flat brush. I should have got a second one next time. I already spent like almost four hundred dollars at the art store. <laughs> I only have a budget for so much. So many paint brushes at once. There's actually a few I want to order online too. So, I mean, if I like these, these are really nice flat brushes. I'm liking them. So, we've got the warm white here. I'm going to grab a bunch of that on the brush. We're going to slowly add this warm white in. I'm going to just try to add the base color of this and then we'll blend it a little bit after. I grab a thinner brush to blend that out with. I'm going to have to grab a thinner brush to blend this out a little bit more. I have these like little ones that are like old round brushes and I use these quite a bit. They used to be pointy, but they're not pointy anymore. <laughs> so they're great for blending. Let me start on this bottom section.
just kind of dabbing off this brush too. And So that's getting like quite blended in the top there. I'm gonna work on blending this bottom section. warm white on my blender brush just to kind of blend some of these out a little bit more. area as well. So what we're doing blend those out. adding a little bit more of that green color into the shadow here just to make sure the shadow is looking okay along this line here blending that out and the background will make the green less green <laughs> it'll tone it down a little bit when we add the blue in the background. I think blue will look really good with this. Like, how cute are like the bao bun and the sushi gonna be together? Like, we're gonna have a cute little sushi and a bao bun. I feel like that looks so cute together. Okay, we're gonna grab. I am probably gonna use actually my other new flat brush that I got. I might as well use all of the new brushes, right? I have a number two flat brush as well, and I think that'll be good in the background. Normally I use my flat shader brush, but we're gonna go with this in the background. Okay, so we're gonna start out with this nice dark purple color. I like how uh, these brushes are a little firmer than the other ones that I have. Picks up the paint nicely. I'm going to go around the edges here just to get kind of that little line going on there. We blended some really nice colors today. I feel like the colors go really nice together. Some days you just have like really nice color combos and you're like, wow, that was, that was a good one. 
That was a good choice. <laughs> so I'm just rounding out the edge of this bun here. This is the darkest part of the shadow. We're going to go into more of that blue as we get over to the other parts. Grab this blue now. Go into here. brush is really nice for the edges so works out quite nice okay we're gonna go into this deep blue color now this is nice for the edges of here So the shadow in this one has some interesting shapes so we got to play with that that's why I kept the shadow like quite visible in this one I kept it into the photo quite a bit because it's got a very neat shadow to work with got kind of like these wispy ones because of the carrots and then this one here of the edge of the bun, making sure I get the shapes right the best we can anyway. I haven't cleaned off my brush in between it yet, but we will soon in order to like work with that color a little bit more. into that orangish color kind of uh, covered up my carrot a little bit there whoops okay we should be able to go back and fix that a little bit and then just grabbing this blue. Adding that color in a little bit more. Just around the edges. Kind of like dry brushing a little bit of that pigment on. Cover that up a little bit. That looks pretty good now. And then there's kind of I'm going to clean this off so we don't have as much of that purple color on the brush anymore. We're going to go more into that lighter blue now. Okay, should be able to get into that light blue now. 
That looks so pretty. Such a pretty color. Almost missed you, had to run errands. Oh, thanks for joining today. Kind of just, uh, I guess we're finishing off the background and then we got some details to add so you didn't miss, I mean, I guess you missed the middle area, but we still got probably another like half hour to an hour to go, I think, with all the details and stuff. Trying out some new brushes, so just being careful with them <laughs> so I don't damage the tips of them and I'm going to wash them right away to make sure they stay nice and fresh. Just cleaning that off. Okay, we're going to go into this blue color. It's a nice light blue color here. So pretty. I can catch the replay. Yeah, exactly. You can watch the replay too. I had a few people said they can't join today, so we've been just kind of chilling over here for the most part on our own during this stream because a lot of people couldn't watch today. That's okay. At least we have the replays, which is nice. And I've noticed that a lot of people have actually been watching the replays, so I'm really glad that these are serving a good purpose for people. I'm glad that YouTube does that and it like saves the the live streams. And it was nice to like go on stream last night with the vertical live stream. That was a nice change. I might have to do some more of those. I had some people saying they want more of a tour and stuff of the studio and to like just like chat with me more like that. So I might try to do some more of those live streams too where we just like chit chat while I'm like working. So I'm normally just in the studio, like, you know, filming content and stuff like that. And maybe you guys can watch some of that, like, little process stuff. And I can explain my editing and how I do certain things. But I really like the live stream. That was so fun last night. It's like a new thing on YouTube, the vertical live streams. I really enjoyed that. This one's like a really fun one today. I feel like it looks so delicious. Like I need to go out and buy some of these. <laughs> I'm gonna add them onto my next grocery order again. We had them a few weeks ago and they were so good. And they're just like little kits. And you like steam the buns. I feel like we could try to make them ourselves too. I've made little bao buns ourselves, but I feel like the like little crispy tofu thing that they have in the middle, I haven't been able to like replicate something like that yet. So I'm going to have to practice and see if I can get like a good recipe going for the crispy tofu in the middle. Mm. I feel like I could probably use the air fryer and make the crispy tofu in the middle. Like a nice like hoisin sauce or something. Because I think that's what the sauce was, was like a hoisin and like tamari sauce to go on these. Add a little bit of linseed oil to this blue. Just to make it a little easier to spread it around.
I'm going to add some of that darker blue into this corner section too. Make sure I get a nice transition between this blue. Go back in with the blender brush and blend this out a bit. I really like the blended backgrounds where we add Just a little bit more blending in the back. Come over here more. You have to be careful around the edges of the bow bun because it would be really hard to fix the blue with this bow bun until it's dry anyway. So I'm going to try my best. At least we've got a nice new flat brush to use too. I'm like blocking the light a little bit so hopefully it's not too dark for you guys there. Just to block the light for a second. to shape the bun a little bit more. There we go. I really like how this new brush picks up the paint too. It's got really nice bristles. I think I would buy more of these again. I'm always trying like new brushes. Some of the brushes I want to try are some of like the Rosemary and Co brushes too. I've heard really good things about those. I have yet to order some online. They come from Europe, I think, those ones. I try to shop local when I can, though, because I'm like, if I can find most of the supplies locally, I ideally like that. There's just something about, like, being able to, like, touch the supplies before you buy them that, I don't know, There's something about physically, I'm kind of like that with, like, clothing and stuff. I don't really like online clothing shopping and I was like gonna like make an order to like do like the online glasses because like they have to get some new glasses because my eyes uh, got worse again and I just I like trying things on in person there's something about in person shopping So I don't like buying things online <laughs> unless I know I, I like them. Like I'll buy like my cleaning products online. But there's even some foods that I don't like buying online. Because I'm like, I like to pick certain things out. We're going to go into a slightly lighter blue in that section. And some of that whitish blue that we made. I can actually grab some titanium white as well. I have to clean some of the blue off my brush. It's like very blue right now. I'm going to clean a little bit of this blue off my brush so then I can get more white on it. Oh. 
running out of space to clean my brush on this one. Maybe I'll just grab this. Got this extra rag here anyway. I try not to use that rag while I'm doing the live streams though, because it will like move my whole easel and make it shaky for you guys. I like the new brushes. I feel like the they're a little bit firmer than my other ones, which is really good for like nice like sharp lines. Especially the flat brushes. I think I would buy flat brushes again. Like you can kind of see the bristles are really long on these too, which is great so you don't get like tons of paint in the feral area. Cuz you don't want to get tons of pigment in that barrel area so I can like load up the brush a little bit more but still have that like nice detail edge okay so I definitely like them a lot I feel like they are a nice addition I'm just grabbing titanium white and there's a little bit of blue on my brush still but I think if I a little bit of linseed oil there it's kind of off the palette so it's hard for you guys to see but it's just titanium white and I'm using my brush got kind of just titanium white on there mm, with a little bit of blue I'm just trying to make this area a little bit lighter it's nice to have kind of like a lighter area It's kind of like the lightest blue there. I got a really small angle brush. It makes nice straight lines. Oh yes, I, I actually got so like this is my first angle brush that I've ever gotten. I don't normally use it. It's an angle shader, it's called. And it has such a nice sharp like edge to it. I really, really like it so far. So I might have to like go buy some nice angle shaders too. I agree, they're like quite nice to use. I mostly just use the like little flat shader brushes, but I'm like experimenting with more brushes in the last year than adding like the liner brushes and stuff. The liner brushes are so handy. Like I don't know how I lived without the liner brushes and like the little blender brush that I have, like the little mop brush. I use bigger brushes for bigger paintings, yeah. Yeah, it's nice to have bigger brushes for like the bigger paintings for sure. I have some bigger brushes too, and they're quite nice for the bigger pieces. You kind of almost have to like scale up your brushes when you go to bigger pieces, right? Because you want your brush strokes to be like bigger on those. You probably wouldn't use a lot of these detail brushes on the bigger paintings as often. I think that's the thing with like doing all these mini paintings. I've like gathered so many mini brushes now because I just I need all of the like little mini brushes for these paintings. I haven't actually done a big painting in a while. I thought about um, maybe buying like a separate like little easel to have in the studio so I can like work on a big painting too because I haven't done a big painting in a really long time. I did one last year, actually made, I did a commission for one of my family members and I did like a big landscape for my aunt and that was like a lot of fun to do. actually really enjoyed it. it. took me forever to finish it though so I'm like it would be nice to have like a separate easel for it so that I can work on it forever. I have time. I love my mop brush. I mean, bigger angle. Yeah, I love my little mop brush. Like, look at these cute little mop brushes. They're so nice. Yeah, this is like a mini mop brush. It's like a <laughs> an eighth inch one. Very tiny. 16 by 20 of my sister's dog. Oh, that's nice. That's like a nice size too, 16 by 20. It's like quite big, I guess. I can't remember what my aunt's one was, but that was like a massive painting. It was even bigger than that. It was for like above her couch. It was like a giant one.
It'd be nice to work on some bigger sizes. I guess I could just cut the paper that I, cause I think the paper that I have is like 12 by 16. So I cut the 12 by 16s into like these smaller ones. But I could also just like paint on the whole one. I thought about maybe doing some like landscape ones a little bit bigger. Oh, that's looking so good. I like how that's turning out. I'm gonna grab my little blender brush. Got this like really tiny one. I haven't actually painted an animal for a while. Animals are really fun to paint. I've done our cats a few times. I never actually finished the bigger one I have of our one cat. I should uh, finish that at some point. It's a 12 by 12 of our cat. Animals are so cute. They're so fun to paint. They have so much like, like the textures of the like fur and stuff is really nice to paint. What kind of dog uh, are you painting? It's like different fur, I guess, for every different kind of dog, right? <laughs> really big paintings are fun, but where would I put it? Yeah, I know. I already uh, struggled to figure out where I put all these tiny paintings. <laughs> Got like tiny paintings lining like all the walls in our house. I mean, you guys can, uh, I guess you can't see it in the background right now, but I was showing them last night. I have a bunch lined up in the studio here, and then I have some in my front hall. <sighs> some upstairs. I'm going to have to try to fill up my husband's office at some point with them. I'm going to, like, take over his office upstairs with mini paintings. It's good because my husband said he doesn't mind having mini paintings all over our house. That's someday our house is going to be like an art exhibit. <laughs> we just all like my mini paintings. That would be really cool at some point to like have like some sort of like art show or art exhibit of like all of the different paintings. <laughs> uh, Black Lab, she's almost all great. Oh, our doggo is getting gray too. He's getting old. He's uh. He's a cross between a lab, a German Shepherd, and a Husky. I like labs, they're cute. Our friend actually got a lab more recently. A little lab, they're hyper, oh man. Little puppies are hyper. They chill out into their older years though. Our dog is so chill, like honestly with the breeds that he has, he is, he's just Mr. Guard Dog. <laughs> He's such a chill dog, though. He's just lazy, sleeps most of the day. He does go on hikes and stuff with us, but most of the time he's like, can we go home? <laughs> we think he's about, we adopted him, and we think he was like four or five when we adopted him. So he is probably around 10 years old now. Oh. He's old in dog years. <laughs> okay, I'm just blending around this edge here. Just really getting that color into there. I'm going to grab my mop brush too, and we will blend out the other. So I'm just going to hold on to this and I'm going to dry brush it. So I'm just dry brushing this and taking off some of the pigment and then I'm just taking it on here, brushing it there. Just 
slowly blending out those colors. Yeah, these mop brushes are so helpful. I just need to get another one of these. Especially like a bigger one for bigger paintings. I only have this like mini mop brush. But it'd be nice to have a slightly bigger one for when I do like, because I normally do like the six by six ones. That's normally like the biggest ones that I do. These are three inch by three inch, but the other ones I do are six inch by six inch. So I need a slightly bigger blender brush for those. Blending this out. I really like that we went with a slightly darker color than I was planning to, on doing in the reference photo. I was like, oh yeah, we'll do a lighter color, but I, I think the darker blue looks better. It's just slightly darker and more of that like sky blue in there than I feel like that's kind of a purpley blue in the reference photo. It's like little fuzzies in the painting. Try and get those off. Okay. I mean that's looking pretty good. Got to add some of those details into the main, like sauce and stuff, because we got to add, add those nice highlights now. I love adding the highlights because it really brings everything together when we can get those highlights in there. It's honestly coming together now. It's looking pretty good. Now that we got that, we're going to start adding some highlights in there. Okay. Try not to trip on my cords here. So I'm going to grab one of my really tiny liner brushes. Probably my, I'm going to actually grab my 20 over 0 liner brush and we are gonna start with the blue highlights so we made this kind of bluey white and then there's also we have the warm white color as well so we're gonna add some warmer highlights but first we'll go with the blue highlights and I'm just trying to get that on the tip go this is always where the magic happens. Getting these bright white highlights on here. And then Make sure I don't dip it into the wrong color. Adding it onto the edges. I'm gonna start adding some into really adding those. 
those bright highlights in now. I'm going to add a bit more texture into this as well. Still using the bluish color we made. So we've also got some bright highlights in here. Just going to add it into there. I think the highlights, yeah, they're pretty blue in here. We've also got some highlights. And the tofu kind of crispy bits. So I'm just adding some of that blue highlight in there as well. Very subtle highlights. So I've got a lot of bluish highlights within the tofu itself. There's like a shininess almost on the top of the tofu here. So I'm just adding some of that blue into it. And then we gotta add some little highlights on these cucumbers down here. Just grabbing some of that titanium white, it's kind of off of the palette there. But all it is is just some titanium white mixed with the blue that we had there. Just adding highlights around the cucumber just to like make the edges stand out a little bit more. Dipping into that titanium white again. And then there's also some highlights kind of on the bun a little bit. Got some blue highlights on the bun there. Got some blue highlights along the top as well. So I'm just trying to get those in on the bun. like along the edge as well. I would say there's a bit more like blue highlights along the bottom sections of the bun as well. a little bit more texture into I noticed that 
we're kind of missing a little bit of texture in the sauce. There's almost kind of like these little like orangey yellow bits. So I'm gonna add like probably this orange mixed with this lighter orange a little. And add those little specks in there. So just a combination of these two orangey colors. And just slowly add some specks into that sauce. Adding a few more specks in there. Just adds a little extra texture there. Then add a bit of this orange actually to the tofu edge here. I'll grab some of this like orangey yellow. I'm gonna just to touch up these carrots a little bit. Hello, welcome to the stream. We are slowly trying to get the details in to the little bow bun now. It's coming along. How are you doing today? I feel like we had a pretty slow start to the morning over here, but we're we're waking up. In there. Add a little bit of this into there. I'm going to kind of touch up the colors around the edges of that one. Like this carrot needs we've got a little bit of blue on that carrot, so we need to touch it up a little bit. Just adding some of those darker parts to the carrots. I'm in like major focus mode today. Major focus mode as I paint carrots. <laughs> Honestly, like we're kind of coming to an end soon. Like this is looking pretty good. I think we did pretty good with this one today. Okay. 
to like I think add some like potentially some darker sections look at kind of this darker color here to deepen some of this a little bit specifically like in these areas here. I want to go overboard with the dark color just like on the edges. But it's it's coming along. There we go. Just dabbing some of this into here to add a little bit more texture in this part. Kind of add some darker areas as well into here. Don't want to go too close to the highlights we made though. Probably add a bit of that darker color well or the tofu over here. Might need like quite a small one to fix that area. Just moving the blue color over more. We put the sauce out for like a too far earlier, so I knew I needed to fix that. Okay, that looks a little bit better now. Just deepening that up with a bit of that purple that we were using. And we want that sauce color up into here as well. So I'm going to grab kind of that red color now. Make it kind of line up with that bottom sauce. Add a little dark in that area. Darken the carrot a little bit. So it blends into there a bit more. Got a little bit of that purple. Put it straight in the corner there between those two carrots. That'll add a little bit more depth to it. You're just kind of adding depth with these darker colors now. Just kind of dabbing that darker purple into like the corners of the super deep sections making it a little bit darker, which is nice. I'm going to start adding a little bit of that bull, well, not black, but purple. <laughs> purple is our black in this. I don't know why, I find it just like makes it so much colorful to use purple instead of black. adds a little bit more depth to here. This is going to add some texture by adding this darker color. Kind of more like crispy bits. There. 
that like a little crispy bit added a little extra there the crispy bit that like fell there and maybe we'll add that in it's in the reference photo There we go. That's coming together now. Just grabbing more of this reddish color. Add a bit more of this red here. I feel like that carrot is coming through a little too much in that area. Just lighten that a bit. I'm gonna add a bit more of those like kind of orangish specks on the top too. A little bit more of texture. There we go. I am gonna put that brush down. And I think we're like, I think we're like pretty good here, right? I think I'm gonna like stop touching it now because it actually actually looks pretty good. I like how it turned out. I'm glad we like tried out some of these like new brushes today. And I feel like it's a nice like match for the uh, little sushi that we made. We got the sushi and now we got the bao bun. Look at that little sushi and bao bun. Look at that. Oh, I love that. Got like little little matching ones. I gotta do more food like this. This is fun. I like that. Also, did you guys notice I got like a cute new little dress here? I got a bunch of new dresses at the thrift store. This one's like really cute. Look how this one looks. It's got these little puffy sleeves. My husband actually picked out these nice little cardigans. <laughs> I know I think it looks pretty good I am really happy with how that turned out thanks for hanging out with uh, me today guys that was fun okay I will go to the thank you scene now because thank you guys for like hanging out today and painting along with me potentially if you're watching it back uh, thanks for tuning in like you can Ask any questions you have in the comments if you are watching the stream back to like use it as a tutorial. But thanks for hanging out. Make sure you tag me on social media if you do use the reference photo at Megan Jossel Art and use the hashtag mini paint challenge. Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> tag me anywhere with those and I am on most of the platforms there. But yeah, thanks for hanging out today guys and I will see you next week. Uh, we're going to do another vertical live stream for sure next Tuesday. I might try some like test streams this week later on and we can just hang out while I'm like working and stuff too because the vertical live was really fun the other day. So just uh, make sure you have the notifications on on my YouTube channel. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed so then you get like notified when I do like little vertical lives and stuff they're gonna kind of be spontaneous but I'll definitely do vertical lives on Tuesday the night before just to like set up with you guys that was nice to hang out and set everything up okay so I will see you for sure next Tuesday and I hope you all have a good rest of your day so take care everyone bye